many sons, and many sons, and and many sons had father Abraham. And Abraham had many sons, and his sons had father Abraham, and one of them, and so are you. Let's go. What's going on everybody? It's your boy Cody Michener coming at you again with another episode of BIMS Blow Your Mind Bible Stories, baby! Last week I told you the mind-blowing story of the Tower of Babel. We see crazy stuff because that's where we find people's sin nature and selfish desires to be so strong that they thought that they were better than God. <laughs> So God confused them and separated mankind. But then I introduced to you this week's... <clears throat> but then I introduced to you our protagonist from this week's episode, Abraham. Abraham. I love the story of Abraham because even though he's a legend, like a biblical legend, because he's known as the father of faith. Dude was just a no-name guy. Well, I mean, he actually had a name. It was Abram. Because before Abraham the legend, he was just a dude named Abram. Abram and God called Abram out. Bring him out, bring him out. God told him to pack his bags and leave that land that he had known his entire life. Yeah, so that's my first takeaway. You don't need to be someone to do something. You just need to be someone with faith and you can do anything. Woo! Let me say it again. You don't need to be someone to do something. You just need to be someone with faith and you can do anything. Anything. It's a little cliche, but it was cute. Anyways, God gives Abram instructions and he listens. He obeys God and then God tells Abram that he's going to make him into a great nation. Meaning, he going to have some children and they going to have some children and they children's children going to have some more children. That's cool and all, but Abram was 75 years old. <laughs> You know, something that I really appreciate about this man is that he's just an ordinary guy. Just like you and me. And he makes mistakes, but God still uses him. You know that I can use somebody. And you'll begin to see a common theme in season two of BIMS. That God can take people who make mistakes and fail and uses them for his plan. Yes, sir. <laughs> God uses normal people to do extraordinary things. Immediately, we find Abram making mistake number one. This man betrays his wife. Oh, baby. Wow. wow. As a man and married to a beautiful woman, more beautiful than me, I still got it though. I can attest to the fact that it's easy to psych yourself out if you're with somebody who's prettier than you. Like, you start to read into things that you don't necessarily need to be reading into. You misinterpret stuff. You start jumping to conclusions. You start coming up with some bad ideas, just like my man Abram did. You all, like, insecure, and you just start doing stuff that don't really make no sense. On their travels, Abram crossed into Egypt. He wasn't from there, and that made him nervous. He looked at his beautiful wife, and he thought, my goodness, she is too beautiful to be with me. If these people know that she's my wife, they will surely kill me and take her for themselves. A lot of times marrying up is a good thing, especially if you ugly. <laughs> I'm joking, guys. I mean, his name is Abram, not Abrahamsom. <laughs> so he was like, hey, listen, girl, if they ask, you my sister. <laughs> They would believe that you are my sister way more than they would believe that you're my wife. And then they wouldn't kill me in order to get to you. Bruh. This plan is dumb because they still gonna take your wife, homeboy. They gonna take her regardless whether or not she is your wife or your sister. Anyways, Abram's wife, Sarai, becomes the talk of the town. Man, I'm telling you, she is that pretty. The ruler of Egypt, Pharaoh, was like, yo, let me, let me get that girl, bring her here. Bring her here. And give her brother all the gifts and cattle as a thank you for doing me this solid. The Lord did protect Sarai during this mix-up. Don't you worry about that. Pharaoh ended up sending Sarai back to Abram after God interceded. Is the moral of the story that if you're the funny guy and you land the beauty, you better not act like like she's your sister? Nah, man, that's not the moral of the story. Well, kinda. But but not actually. Well, but but not for real. Our actual takeaway here is that even though we fail, even though we make mistakes, God can turn it into a win. Win. Win, 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 
win. Cut that out. He can use you and your story. In this particular story, God reiterates his promise to Abram. He says, look up into the night sky and count the stars. One day you will have as many descendants as there are stars in the sky. God even set aside some land for Abram and his future family. That's all fun and games and stuff, but Abram and his wife were old. They were skeptical because they were old and crusty and they were never able to have any children of their own. And it wasn't for a lack of trying either. <laughs> Before this promise, they thought for sure that they were never going to have any kids. So instead of trusting in God completely, we find Abram making another mistake. Abram. Abram and Sarah came up with this idea. Sarah had a servant and thought that maybe if Abram married her and had a child, then that's how Abram's descendants were going to outnumber the stars in the sky. <laughs> Yo, it's music time. Listen up. But you can probably relate to this lack of faith though. God's nudging you into a certain direction and you're standing there like, God, how? How is this plan going to work? And even with faith, you have these doubts. And these doubts lead you to taking things into your own hands. Abram gave birth to a son with his wife's servant. But that wasn't the son that God would use to help father many nations. But God intervenes. My favorite life stories are the but God stories. Abram fails time after time, but God follows through. I was struggling in geometry class, but God came through and finally gave me a teacher that could actually help me understand it. And even in college, I took the same math course three times in a row, costing me hundreds if not thousands of dollars. At one point, I was even thinking about dropping out and throwing in the towel, but God got me through it. Or maybe for you, your parents were struggling during the pandemic, but God got one of your parents a job that they needed. Or maybe when my oldest brother, Davey, died this past year, All of a sudden, out of nowhere, and my family was left extremely hurt and heartbroken, but God showed his love to us through the support of his church. Whatever might be happening in your life, whatever you may be going through, whatever trials and failures may come your way, keep the faith alive because there is a but God moment waiting to happen to finish your story. Do you have a but God story? If you do, please drop it in the comments below so we can all interact and see the work that God's doing in each other's lives. You could really encourage somebody with sharing what God has done for you. And in this story, Abram betrays his wife with that whole sister thing and he sleeps with his servant but God reiterates a promise in the form of a covenant. In him, all the families of the earth will be blessed and that he will be the father of many nations. So God changes Abram's name to Abraham, which means father of many. Yo, that's dope. Sarai becomes Sarah and God promises a son to her, even though Abraham was 100 years old and she was 90. Ugh. And that's why, through God's miracle, when they gave birth to a son, they named him Isaac, which means laughter. Because it must have been funny to see some old nasty people give birth to a little baby. Or maybe it's because when Sarah heard from God that they were going to have kids, she laughed at God. <laughs> Probably one of those. But what I do know is that Isaac was a part of God's plan. God's plan. And God would use him to fulfill his promise to Abraham. Which is why it was so strange to hear that. God instructed Abraham to kill his son as a sacrifice, which we're going to discuss next week. Until then, remember whose you are.